for years, we as investors didn't really stand a chance because we didn't know what we owned because the data wasn't readily available to us, but it is today. I've put it on my cheat sheet where I project what the earnings are going to be in the future and how that interpret it, interprets into increase in price. And I've, I've built this and added it to my cheat sheet just last week where I'm showing you um, what the projected growth in earnings are in 24, 25, 26, and then ranking them based on their average rate of growth over the next three years and over the next uh, two years. And then I ranked them. And as you can see, based on earnings growth, the number one stock you could own is Micron. Well, there's more to it than that as well. And so I wanted to, I added this part, and this is all about financial analysis and how financially strong is a company. And, and in order to do that, you have to have data. Well, we do have data now, data that we didn't have no more than five years ago, we've got it now. And let me just walk you through some of the data that I'm compiling on the stocks that I follow so that I can make better investment decisions. And then I want to share it with you. This is what is called asset turn ratio. What it is, is the revenues of the year uh, divided by the total assets. So in other words, if um, if, if an asset is added or a dollar is added to Apple's um, equation to their availability, if a dollar is added, it gets a markup or a, a it turns into a dollar 16. Okay. To give you a, 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 a representation, if it's Adobe, uh, A-D-B-E, it's 71 cents. Now let's go on beyond that and say, what is the return on assets owned by, total assets owned by Apple uh, relative to income. In essence, what it says, if you take all of Apple's assets and you put, put it up against their income, they make 30.75% on it. Adobe makes 17.9. So you're, you're, you're starting to see, even though they're, although they're in different industries, we get a relationship between the two companies and we start to understand what do we own? Okay, let's go to the next category. This is uh, net income divided by equity. Again, equity in includes above what assets is debt. So how much does taking on debt benefit the growth of our asset relative to without it? Well, if we take on debt, uh, Apple growth becomes 160%. Uh, whereas Adobe's is 35. If it's just assets, not including debt, we're getting 30% on our money, 160. So it becomes very important or advantageous for Apple to take on debt because of, of they can turn around and make good profits on it. And I'll show you why. Okay, so now we take the debt out of it and we say, just capital, what is their return on capital? Net income divided by capital, they have a return of 46%, whereas Adobe has roughly half of that. Now, why are they so profitable? Because their gross margins are 45%, rounded up to 46, and their net margins are 26%. Adobe, on the other hand, has greater margins, gross margins, but again, that's because they aren't making a hard product like an iPhone. They're making software, and so they have an 86, whoop, so they have an 86.6% uh, gross margin, whereas their net margins are 25, more like what um, what apples are. So I've done that on every one of the stocks. And then I go through and based on my knowledge and my understanding of these numbers, I rate them, rate them as to what they are. Now, something that I want you to look at, remember we said based on projected earnings, Micron is the number one stock we should own. But let's look on financial st stability. Uh, when they bring on a dollar on assets, it creates a dollar 32, okay? As opposed to, or it, it creates a 32 cent increase in, uh, in revenues, whereas 
for every dollar that Apple brings in, they make a dollar sixteen as opposed to Micron's thirty-two cents. So not as good. Re uh, return on assets. Micron is a negative. Well, why is that? Because right now they're not profitable. Okay, so that throws a different light on it. Uh, what's their return on equity? A negative three, because again, right now they're not profitable. But why are they our number one stock? Because over the next three years, they anticipate becoming profitable because all of the, the GPUs that are going to go into data centers have to have memory chips. So they're projecting, even though they are a D-rated stock today, that they're going to have some tremendous earnings growth, which will change all these numbers. So now, with that piece of information, do we have a better understanding of what we own? I think we do. Why do we have this new understanding? Because we've been able to access the data and then interpret the data. That has to be in the equation too. You can look at this sheet and just what the heck is all that? But if you know how to interpret it, and again, uh, this is on my cheat sheet now. I've added it just today. And if you will learn this and, and come to where you understand these numbers, you can predict which stocks are going to go up. Let's look at another one of my favorite stocks. Rate it number 48 out of 49. That is AEHR. But let's look at a dollar invested into this company turns into 59 cents. So think about that this way. Where would you have to go to give a, a dollar to a bank or any place else? And they say, we'll pay you 59% interest every year from this point on. That's what that's telling you. On the other hand, if you put it into Apple, they're saying, we'll pay you a dollar 16 rather than 59 cents. So let's go on here. We find, though, that AEHR is giving us almost as much as Apple on return on assets. What are assets? Cash, equipment, and such. What is, what's the difference between assets and equity? We add borrowed money. So we are, when it, what it's saying is when they go borrow money at 5%, they can turn it into something like substantially greater of 35% on capital. Again, so even though AEHR is our 80, 48th ranked stock, it's got a good, strong financial. And if we then go even deeper into the cheat sheet, we see it's got a historically strong rate of return when semiconductors are performing well, when the EVs are buying semiconductors, when um, the military is buying semiconductors, when you're buying toasters and refrigerators, but you haven't been of late because interest rates are high, because the price of groceries are high, because the cost of gasoline is up. Those are now coming down. So the semiconductor business will go up. So that is why AEHR is a B here, but poorly ranked over here. That's what I do on every stock. Now, the one you're asking about, what about NVIDIA? NVIDIA is my 15th ranked stock based on its growth potential uh, in growth in earnings. But look at this. A dollar invested in NVIDIA in or in, in assets is equivalent to a dollar forty-three. That's not the best on the chart, but it's better than Apple. Its its uh, return on assets are sixty-two percent. Again, not as good or uh, better than Apple. And it's a return on equity. Again, this is assets plus debt is one hundred and twenty-three percent. Apple's is one hundred and sixty. 69 to 44, and you can see now why, and, and gross margins are 75, and net margins are 55. That's why NVIDIA is an A+, plus, and that's why it's the 15th ranked stock in on my cheat sheet. So that's how I interpret stocks. That's how I analyze stocks. And what you need to do is if you want access to this, come join our 
our tribe, sign up for our platinum program, and get and and get it free for 14 days, and then educate yourself. You can learn so much just if you digest this. And then if you go over to my full cheat sheet where you see both the projections and what I project the price of the stock is going to be. Uh, Apple, I'm projecting that at the end of 2026, it's going to be $341. And I explained to you exactly how I come to that number by equating their earnings growth to their P.E. ratio and we can predict the price. Then, as I said, I've just added this, which gives you even more detailed information and another look at the financials and another interpretation of the, um, of, of the earnings growth so that you can make better investment decisions. That's my objective here, is for you not to have any excuse for not making money in, the, in, in, in this in this current market. Now, I had a, a question that I had mentioned my 20-year um, Roth IRA. I just turned 80, and so I'm funding my Roth IRA for the next 20 years. And I have basically said that if, if, you'll, if you'll follow my path and you'll put uh, $1,400 into Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Google, and Meta uh, every year, for the next 24, 20 years, if you follow along with me, our objective is to repeat what happened the last 20 years. And that is our Roth IRA of $6,000 a year turns into $4.092 million of tax-free income. That's what's on my cheat sheet. This is a historical study of all the stocks over since 1999. What was their 10-year, their 5-year, their 10-year, and their 20-year average rate of return? A am I saying that history will repeat itself? No, but it certainly is a good guide as to what might happen. Then if you can understand and, and educate yourself to where you understand the, finan the, 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 the financials and the technicals, you can make a lot of money in this stock market because the world is about to change for the better, I might add. We're going to go into a deflationary period as we replace human beings with robots so that our cars become cheaper, our, our running shoes become cheaper, even the eggs become cheaper because it's, it's, it's directly from the chicken to you. There's no human beings in, in between. So the price of eggs will come down in the future, as will the price of gas. As, as Elon said, by 20, I think he said 2035, there'll be more humanoid robots on this earth than there are humans. And that will become deflationary. And if you can keep up with and, 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 and understand the financials of the stock market and the stocks you own, please learn what you own and become educated and then make good financial decisions. I want to help you. That's what I do for my life, trying to help you make better decisions. Go to Best of Us Investors, sign up for the 14-day free trial, and you got 14 days. See if this can help you, or if it can't, go away. <laughs> okay. We're going we're gonna to moderate. We're going to mechanize this even more and make it easier. I'm going to invest a bunch of money into this and build a new website and make it easy for you to understand. I'm Kerry Grankmar, I'm a retired financial advisor. I work for you.